Not like for instance, you don't have to raise your hands after saints, but I just want how many receive mercies and compassion? Don't raise your hand on this morning. When how many people remember their goodness and mercy follow you all the days? I don't care what's following you. As long as goodness and mercy is following you, you're going to always be in good shape with God. These are just basic things, y'all, that we can get, we can cause life to be too complicated. My sister said it in Matthew 6 and starting with verse 30. First of all, God tell you in a certain way not to worry. So he said, take no thought for tomorrow. See, but yet we already in till tomorrow. <laughs> Because we're so busy worrying about stuff. Look, we can't even enjoy the day. And it's enough evil today for you to deal with. And this, remember, these are fundamental, basic things. Well, we, we make life complicated. Because God is God. Wait a minute. Just seek ye the, the kingdom of God first. You're doing it. You're doing that last. <laughs> I'm just saying, after we get all complicated, then we come back to seeking God. When you say, I told you to do that first thing. See? And what 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 do you want from him? Because all these things will be added. See, these are basic fundamental building blocks. Life ain't complicated. Y'all, there's so many religious lies, and we've been taught to believe it. Uh, I'm climbing up the rough side of the mountain. I said, I ain't. I said, God told me to speak to it. I, I think I said, I ain't climbing up nothing. If it's in my way, I ain't climbing up just to go around and to come back down. Yeah. Look, I'm speaking to it, and look, and I'm going to tell it where to go. Look, I'm going to give it a location. God says send it to yonder place. But give it a location. Point I'm making is, and people say, you know, life ain't going to be easy. I said, I don't know what God you follow. My God said his yoke is easy. But yet we, take, we tell folks, even, even you get to the point where you rejoice in tribulation. Look, you be going through, don't even know you're going through. Look, anything you're going through, you're coming out at the same time. See, so rejoice because you're coming out. Don't be rejoicing because you're in it. And ain't nothing that you get in that God ain't in. Matter of fact, he get in it and then call you in it. <laughs> Look, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, we know we put three in there, but I see four. Uh, that fourth one was in there before he called the three. God is going to never let you get into something that he don't get into himself. Don't he hold your hand? Are you not in his hands? Your names are engraved in the palms of his hands. <laughs> Look, how can you miss it? It's actually impossible. That's why, y'all, I'm telling you, God be giving me revelations there. It's like, God, I'm so glad because, you know, I'm so glad I can prove this stuff in the Bible because it sounds so weird. We know God deal with homosexuals. Ain't that right? We know God deal with heterosexuals. Ain't that right? But do you know God deals also with bisexual? Amen. Can you show me that? Have you ever heard that in the Bible? I want to show you stuff. See? So, look. But it's the way you have to see it. That's why you got to have the leading of the Holy Ghost. Because you, you won't even know the stuff is here. Amen. God got to lead you. So, so he got to lead me and to make it so plain that God, my God, I ain't never seen that before. Because it's the way you see it. You see it only through the eyes of God. If you see it through your eyes, you'll be carnal and you'll miss it. But seeing it through the eyes of God. See, God, he deal with every issue. Look, he deal with deceptive hearts. Look, he's God of you got to have the Holy Ghost, y'all. Because this devil is too smart for you. You got to have God deal with him. Look, you, uh, you may not know the agenda of people. So we're coming out of the 19th chapter of Judges. 
and I'm going to show you there are many points. So if you if you don't mind, saints, I try to mm-hmm. read bits and pieces, but God wouldn't let me let it go. So it's the entire chapter. So be patient with me. You look. You won't be disappointed. Amen. Praise Amen. for this inside information. He reveals secrets to the righteous. Praise the Lord, family. Secrets. Look, there are secrets out here that the world ain't going to never get. But you'll get if you're willing to hear it and let God expound it or explain it. You'd be like, oh, my God. So in this passage, it's got many things to deal with in this whole chapter. You hear this, y'all? Many things. If you be patient with me, you're going to say, oh, my God. Look, so I'm going to show you how God is doing things. Look, and then you'll get a better understanding of even Deuteronomy 24 when God is saying that Moses gave you a writing of divorce for the hardening of the heart. And a lot of people are not explaining that properly. They thinking you just getting a divorce because y'all have hardened your hearts against each other. He ain't talking about that. And I'm gonna show you one particular example how men are hardening their hearts. That they're abusing the grace of God. You hear this, y'all? Look, men, y'all, even to this day, try to dog their women. You, you should know me by now, y'all. I ain't going to just be talking about the woman only. Look, God said preach the whole counsel. See, whatever I give you, son, you say. See, and don't fear their faces. Look, <laughs> so it's like, I'm going to tell it whatever he gives to me. Praise the Lord and stand my ground. Praise the Lord. So, look, of course, smiling faces, that's just, I got so many titles for this. So I'm just trying to stay with smiling, smiling faces. Praise the Lord. Tell lies. <laughs> so I want to show you something, how cold-hearted man was getting, how he had hardened his heart against his woman. And he began to build that as generations go, not knowing that God allowed him to have additional women, but God did not ex- ex- expect him to dog him like he did. Like, like we're doing to this day even. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And how man pretends. Sisters, really pay attention. How man pretends to win you back. But he has a hidden agenda. Praise the Lord. These, there are several points I want to make in here. Praise the Lord, family. That we need to take heed. So even um, this chapter, the 19th chapter also coincides with the 19th chapter of Genesis. I'm, I'm going to point all this out to you. So you may be seeing my wonderful family. Praise the Lord. So we know in Genesis, just to put, I want you to put this on the back burner, just let it be simmering. But we know in Genesis in the 19th chapter, how that a lot was telling folks, uh, please don't don't come after these men that I have in my house. Remember that story? Amen. But there's something in addition that was moving. That men weren't paying attention to. That the public weren't paying attention to. And then it's gonna mention, it's gonna mention also to you, be careful how you hang in the streets. There's something watching you. That's following you. That you have no idea that's watching you. And following you to your locations. Praise the Lord that it has an evil agenda. Just by you hanging in the streets. Praise the Lord. These are some of the points that's mentioned in here. So we're going to break them down. And we're going to begin with Judges 19 and verse number 1. It's the entire chapter. We be cool right now. Is is it? Is that part of your agenda? Hurry up, Pastor. You can forget that. (laughs) You know, Pastor, it's rare when he preaches a short message. 
<laughs> Who don't know that? Because you're about to find out. See, because God is giving out as much as he can while it's available. Praise the Lord. We ain't going to always endure sound doctrine. Praise the Lord. So these, these stories, and you're going to find out, y'all, how cold-hearted heterosexuals can be. Look, that God is going to show you scripturally that a man can go this far. And remember, they see these same spirits out here, and you're going to see in prophecy, they're here right now. That's why, y'all, you got to watch it when people want to reconcile. You got to be led of God if that thing is real or not. Folks want to get vengeance. Play it off. Who can I fool? Because of what they did to me. That spirit is out here. This is why folks killing up everybody and people, oh, what's going on? I said, it's in your Bible, what's going on? Once again, y'all, a lot of stuff I got to keep repeating because in Thessalonians, God told us because you didn't, you love the lie and you want to believe the lie, I'm going to give you a spirit of delusion. And when you look up delusion, it meant to, it's going to mention health, mind, mental issues. And yet folks are running to the so-called world from mental issues when God is letting you know, I'm giving you a spirit of delusion, but only to liars. That's in the church, outside the church. If you're going to live a lie, then he's going to give you a lie. And now he's going to give you a spirit of delusion. You ain't going to know if the, if the lie is a lie anymore or if the lie has become truth. You are getting a taste of it now. You, people get the full blunt in the great tribulation. But it's starting now if you pay attention. Why so much health issues? Mental issues. That's what delusion means. It has three different definitions. That second definition is going to tell it like it is. It's so simple, y'all. So people are still wondering, man, I've got mental issues. I said, no, God is releasing it. Evidently, you must be living a lie. Because that lie attracts it. Since, since you want to live a lie and you keep running from it, even fighting against it, I'm going to let you have these mental issues. One of the first things God do besides dealing with your spirit, he renew your mind. While so-called church folks having all these mental problems. Have the nerve to ask people, do you know a good therapist? I said, I don't know no better therapist than God himself. He's a wonderful counselor. And that was free. The world going to charge you. If anything, you're going to be crazy and broke. <laughs> Look, you run out of money, see, if, see how much of a discount they give you. They're going to discount you. You ain't got no money, <laughs> you won't be counted in. Sessions are over. God only deal with our issues, saints. He ain't trying to deal with the crazy stuff. See, and I want to show you how people... They get caught up in just being merry, merry over stuff, but look, but not into God. Y'all, we're going to Conroe. I, look, I don't want you to get so carnal you forgot God. Somebody should be walking around, I feel like praying. Look, I feel like all of us should be praying. Look, that should be a couple of times during the day. And even at night, if she sits by the night, hey, let's pray. And you that are sleeping, you shouldn't get mad. Praise the Lord. Point I'm making this, y'all, we can't afford, look, not to have our mind on Christ, but you can afford to have your mind stayed on him. God, you know the reward you're going to get. Perfect peace. Praise the Lord. Remember, this is what Timothy was, uh, or Peter was talking about. You forgot you were purged from your old sins. And it said, if a man don't forget this, he shall never fall. Look, you can live perfect 
Stop, look, as long as I can find, I can find many passages where God tell you you're perfect. And yet we let somebody come along and say, ain't nobody perfect. I said, they lied already on God. See, you have a perfect spirit. You live out of your spirit. See, your flesh ain't perfect. We ain't talking about that flesh. I live by my spirit. Look, by your spirit, you are sustained. You kept. You hear this, y'all? So, look, I need to ignore this flesh talking. And hear what God said. Well, I am a, God is a spirit. And they that worship me must worship me in spirit. And truth. See, this word was first spoken. Then it was written. And now you speak what was written. Because Jesus said, it is written. Praise the Lord. Who is it written to? To anybody that want to resist it or anybody want to submit to it. Praise the Lord. But it's still going to be written. But it was first spoken. Let that be. And then God let, it, let people know, write it down. Why write it down? Because you may forget it. And in case you forget it, it is written. Look. I used to have a whole lot of problems, y'all, trying to remember the scriptures. Now, I ain't got hardly no problem. Chapter and verse. Look, I can just sit up and close the Bible and just tell you where to go. Praise the Lord. But look, I ain't trying to get exalted, so I'm going to open this thing up. <laughs> but when I go outside and I may not have my Bible, people have asked you, they ask, where your Bible at? I said, when, you, when I open my mouth, you're going to know where it's at. <laughs> it is written on my heart. Amen. That I might not sin against the Lord. Amen. I'm just saying, y'all. So it's like, good God. A whole lot of people say, man, one man in Jamaica told me this. I told him, my church is here and what all we do and what we believe in. He said, I believe in the same teaching. He said, but I came to check you out. He's one of the head chefs. He said, he said, so I just come to check you out to see what you know. And he said, when I finish talking to you, he said, I need to go back and study some more. <laughs> <laughs> he said, matter of fact, when y'all leave, I would like to make sandwiches for, all, for, the, for the whole crew. <laughs> he said, I just want to bless you. Because he said, Pastor, Pastor, you know a lot. I need to go back and study. And I thought I knew a lot. I said, well, you won the war. I had the sword. And you had the butter knife. I didn't do nothing. Doop, knock it out your hand. It's like that fight is over. I said, so you've been using your butter knife. And I've been using my sword. So he said, you know, I'm glad, you know, he's glad that I ain't rebuking him and stuff. For not knowing what he should be knowing. I said, especially when you say you have the same teaching. So let's see where you're at, since you want to challenge me. Praise the Lord. And now I'm coming back, just look for him to challenge him. And he's, and he's standing in the kitchen, but I sent somebody for him. <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm going to be here tomorrow too. And I'll be looking for you. Praise the Lord. If you're back in the kitchen, I'm going to send one of them brothers back there to go get you. And tell them, Pastor Brown is out here waiting for you. <laughs> I hope your work is done point I'm making is y'all it pays to know this word it pays to have the Holy Ghost we can't afford to be pretending cause there's a spirit that's gonna fool you gonna get friendly with you but you may not have the spirit of discernment to even know what it's up to and I want to show you, family, you're going to see it. You ain't going to believe what you read. So don't try to go ahead and think you know. Amen. Just follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. 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 Look, don't, don't start reading the Bible when you ain't been reading it all week anyway. <laughs> all of a sudden, people be still having their heads down reading. It's like, <laughs> it's like, no, just follow me as I follow Christ. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Look, you ain't been doing that much reading until you came to service. That's human nature. 
So in uh, Judges chapter 19, and you're going to see how it blends into Gen uh, Genesis chapter 19. Amen. Praise the Lord. But a different spirit shows up. And let me see if you can catch it, y'all. Praise the Lord. So in the 19th chapter, verse 1, and it reads, And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel, because God was over Israel. Praise the Lord, y'all. Samuel had the same problem. God over Israel. See? But people think they can do anything they want because there was no man to direct them, but God was directing them. The steps of a good man or a good person, male and female, is order of the Lord. Look, I don't care where you walk. If God didn't order it, you're about to walk into some place you have no business being. Look, it'll be a demon will be out there watching you. And I'm going to show you how certain people follow this devil. I want that to sit, y'all. So, so look, if you don't really know God, there are demons that he, they know how to transform themselves yeah. to angels of light. Look, and to ministers of righteousness. They'll fool you, y'all. Look, y'all, have you heard me say this? I pray, God, that I don't molest and pervert the kids. Why would I pray that? I don't trust me. I know kids love me. You hear this, y'all? And the devil's like, oh, I would like to change that. Look, you can't trust in no flesh. Amen. You can't. Look, you got to be wise enough in God. God, I trust you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because the devil can move in people and throw you off, throw you out of balance, out of alignment with the word of God. It's too many examples in the Bible where folks listen to God and then they start listening to people. And got in trouble every single time. You hear it, family? So still reading, there was no king in Israel that uh, of the house and went out to go his way. Wait a minute, y'all. I jumped too fast. Okay. And, uh, and was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim who took to him a concubine. Now, really follow this, y'all, because God's going to show you some mess up in here. Look, I took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah, and his concubine played the whore. I didn't write this. Look, I'm going to show you how people have vengeance and you don't know it. I want to show you that this woman never repented. Look. Played the heart against him and went away from him unto her father's house. That means she don't want to be married to him no more. Daddy now has authority. Praise the Lord. Now follow this, y'all. Really follow me all the way through. That's why I couldn't let it go. I said, God, I have to read the whole chapter, don't I? Look, and break it down. He said, that's right, son. So let the people put the seatbelts on and settle in. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Did anybody go to the restroom yet? Don't be trying to hold it. Go right now. I'll wait on you. <laughs> I've just said, don't be, all of a sudden, i got to use the restroom. It's too late now. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No, I ain't going to do that to you. <laughs> but it was tempting, yeah. Look, and went away from him unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah, and was there four whole months. Now hear this family, and her husband arose and went after her to speak, keep this in your spirit, friendly unto her, con her, con her daddy, fool everybody, but she don't know the agenda that's hiding. Now it ain't going to be mentioned no more his agenda to later on. So we want to put that down as a foundation. That's just one point. Praise the Lord. Look, look. So to speak friendly unto her. Now that seems like that's a nice thing. It's like he came and got me. He know I've been home. But he came and got me. 
He got a wrong spirit in him, but he's hiding it. You got to have the Holy Ghost. Ain't no telling who gonna come in your life friendly. Smiling faces tell lies. <laughs> look, look at this, y'all. And to bring her again, so you want to bring her back home. He's traveling, trying to find her. So he know she done went back to daddy. So when you come back to daddy, that was a divorce. Because daddy now has authority over her. This is how I'm trying to tell you. This is what Moses in Deuteronomy 24 was talking about. How Moses gave you a divorce for the hardening of your heart. And you're going to see, y'all, how hard this man's heart was. Matter of fact, it was so hard and it was never seen before. And nor shall it ever be. You're going to even read that. Praise the Lord. Look, and to bring her home, and to bring her again, having a servant with him, and a couple of uh, donkeys or asses, and she brought him into her father's house. See, because he, now he got to get favor from daddy. He know what he's doing, y'all. Evil can be a genius. <laughs> and when the father of a damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. And his father-in-law, see, they about to get food now. Look, the damsel's father retained him, or the, 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 the dad said, hang out with us, stay here. I like what you're doing. I like your presentation. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he abode with him three days, so they did eat and drink and lodge there. And it came to pass on the fourth day, when they arose early in the morning, that he rose up to depart, and the damsel, see, now nah, he's getting his wife back. So it looks. And the damsel's father said unto his son in law, Comfort thine heart with a morsel of bread, and afterwards go that way. Look, I'm satisfied with you being friendly to my daughter. So look, go that way, and you can take her with you now. Now, that's going to be, be all the key points before we get to his real agenda. And you're going to see, y'all, that's why I said, Phew. Don't try to go ahead of me just yet. You're going to see you ain't never met a person this evil in your life. See, that's why when she went a horn, in other words, she went to get somebody else because he didn't want her. But yet, she's also in adultery because he never gave her a divorcement. This is how a woman ended up in adultery because the man was so cold hearted. I want to keep you to myself. See, now he's going back for his own pleasures, but he don't want to give a divorcement. Do you hear this, y'all? But yet daddy has, if you come back home, daughter, I have authority over you again. Do you see how this is working, y'all? So it won because we got a divorce because we're so hard and hearted. Nope. Divorce was sanctioned by God. And you can see that God actually used the term divorce in Jeremiah chapter 3. You can see that word, divorce. The, yeah, people say, God hate divorce. I said, that's in this new translation. But in the King James, the original King James that I have right here, it said, God hate putting away. That's separation. Praise the Lord. And he was talking about separation he, because folks wanted to keep the woman. Whenever... At his availability. So I ain't giving you. That's why he hated separation. It should have been. I, I need to give you a divorce. I need to separate. And give you a divorce. But it was over. But every time. He had an unction. Of his flesh. He wanted her. He, she couldn't get loose. So if she found somebody. She's the diet. She was in trouble. So God eventually had to change these laws. Because man was getting too hard hearted. Praise the Lord. And, and look, when I show you this one agenda of this man, show you how hard and hard he was. He going I don't want to go ahead of myself, but it, it's like it, it's, it's so real. When you read it, you're gonna say, My God, how can he do this? He didn't have no problem with it. He? And he went from from bad to worse. Praise the Lord, y'all. Watch her who you get back with. 
I'm saying that to everybody. Tell your friends. You may hear a conversation. I'm thinking about getting back with them. It's like, hold it. Let's make sure God leading you. Make, do you have the Holy Ghost? Praise the Lord, y'all. Look, because I need the Holy Ghost to lead me and guide me to all truth. Look, the heart is deceitful, desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now, y'all, we can harp on the homosexual all day, but I'm, t I'm trying to tell you that the heterosexual is the most evilest man that ever been born. See, t uh, look, so tell the homo homosexual, uh, uh, the most evil man ever was, was the heterosexual. And out of that lust proceeded greater things. Praise the Lord. So, look, I'm going to see if you catch it when we get to this part of bisexual. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he says that in verse 4, and his father-in-law, the damsel's father. No, we're going to go down a little further, saints. And let's go down here. And, and they sat down, in verse number 8. And they sat down and did eat and drink, both of them together. For the damsel's father had said unto the man, be content. Look, I'm going to give you back your wife. Be content. So it's like, I fooled him. I fooled her. And then I'm going to show what's happening, but it's going to be too late to get out of it. He's going to show his disrespect and disorder, and that's in the heart of man today. Today, y'all. Look, you're about to see stuff that you can't believe that you see or hear. It's like, I can't believe they shot up some more folks. I said, you wait. This is just a taste. Because there's going to be approximately five wars. We've had World War One and World War Two. The next war is going to be civil, but it's going to be global. Do you hear this, y'all? Because once God release what spirit, he's letting you know you're going to get a taste of what's to come. We're going to have a financial war. This world is not going to get better. Prophecy has to be fulfilled. No matter what they say, it's going to be a collapse. That's why in the great tribulation, you won't be able to buy or sell except you receive the mark. You're going to be desperate. Praise the Lord. Look, they slowly getting rid of cash, bitcoins. Slowly they're getting rid of cash. What is a bitcoin? You don't even see your money. But yet folks are making millions on it. Of a sudden you don't see. Look, digital stuff. Look, so God is letting you know that look, it's coming. And then the fifth war and final war is going to be the battle of Armageddon. That's going to be the big one out of all of them. But if you pay attention, the wars are extending, extending war of wars. Nation against nation. And God said, take heed. This is the beginning of sorrow. See, this ain't the sorrow. This is just a taste of it. You don't want to be here to get the whole power. Slice should be good enough for you. Look, it's like, and that should be oh, uh, so unpleasant. I don't want to be here to get the whole power. Praise the Lord, family. Look, so I should instruct myself. What must I do to make it in? Praise the Lord. That's why God, as we as we talk in Matthew 3 and 11, you're going to be given the Holy Ghost and that with fire. And then we go to Acts 2, begin with verse number 2, and we find out that the fire is speaking in tongues. And, and landed on all of them in cloven tongues of fire. And they all began to speak. This is so simple, y'all. You have to really be rebelling not to get it. Not knowing that a spirit of delusion is waiting on me. Jesus Christ. 
See, Adam and Eve kept messing with that devil, kept listening to that lie until a spirit of delusion came on it. Now that same tree was one to be desired. They got delight in looking at it. Same tree, nothing changed except the thinking. Delusion came on. That spirit's still here. And it's only going to be given to us as we take on lies. They recognize it. Praise the Lord, y'all. They recognize lies. And, look, and now we bring them in. That's what I'm telling people. If, if you want to get disappointed, hang with pastor. Because I'll be out there preaching when you weren't planning on me preaching. Pastor, I got to go somewhere. Well, get to going. This is what God got me. Praise the Lord. And it's like, this one man, he's so surprised. He said, you want to do what? Buy my groceries. I said, yeah, God told me to. Look, so I just stayed on streets. But in on straight street. Amen. See, the right street. I ain't trying to get on Broadway. See, so you hear this, y'all? See, I'm just trying to let God bless me on the right street. That street been straightened just for me. It was crooked. But he made the crooked straight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Still reading on, y'all. I'm trying to skip some and go on to others. And when the, and verse number seven, and when the man rose up to depart, his father-in-law urged him, therefore he lodged there again. And look, and he arose early in the morning on the fifth day to depart, and the damsel's father said, Comfort thy heart, I pray thee. And they tarried until afternoon, and they did eat, both of them. And when the man rose up to depart, he and his concubine, which was his wife, praise the Lord, and his servant and his father-in-law, the damsel's father, go home. So now they're about to go on a journey. Stay with that, y'all, because all this stuff going to come together like it ain't nothing. Praise the Lord. Uh, and verse now, the next verse, but the man would not tarry that night, but he arose up and departed and came over against Jebus, which is Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. And look, and there were with him two asses or donkeys saddled. His concubine also was with him. So he didn't fool the daddy. Now he got the wife back. But the gin is still in his heart. It's deceitful, desperately wicked. That's why y'all always got to call to God on a regular basis. Search me, try me. If there be any wicked way in me, take it out. Look, you can't trust in yourself. Look, it pays to acknowledge God in all your ways that he direct your path. Don't be talking about I'm so righteous. I'm good. Praise the Lord. And God is God of, look, let me keep you on the straight path. That you see for yourself. Constantly look in the mirror. And don't forget how you look when you walk away. You can't carry a big mirror with you. Get a compact. And all you have to do is see your face. To remind you where you're at in God. Amen family. Verse 11. <laughs> and when they were by Jubas. The day was far spent. And the servant said unto his master. Come I pray thee. And let us turn in into this city of the Jubasites and lodge in it. And his master said unto him, We will not turn aside hither into the city of a stranger. A lot of times we go in places and it's a strange place. Ain't no way in the world we go on to Conroe and we don't be prayed up. Pastor ain't going to allow it. Praise the Lord. We're going to be prayed up if you forget. We're going to be prayed up in this church before you leave here. Because we're going where strangers are, where wrong spirits are. But let God prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies. Somebody got to be discerning enough. Like when we went out to the Moon River Ranch, somebody got to pick up a spirit. Whether you see it or not, I need to discern that I'm being watched. That the devil is going about as a roaring lion. 
sink and whom he may devour. Praise the Lord. And let that devil know God got his eyes on you. And he has told somebody to watch him. Bind him. Make sure the weapon he's forming don't prosper. Praise the Lord. Somebody got to look. And that's going to be fun. Amen. Hey, Pastor, we was having fun. Till you said, let's have prayer. <laughs> look, uh, look, don't be surprised if I have my checkbook with me. And I'll write you back what you paid to come and send you back home. <laughs> if you see me give you a check for the monies you gave to come. What's this for, Pastor? Go on back home. Look, you don't want this place. See, you came for the wrong reason. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, says Praise the Lord. So let's, 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 let's go over here, saints, to verse number, um, let's try 15 here. And they turn aside. Is that, is that in your Bible, say? And they turn aside to, to go in and to lodge and give beer. And when he went in, he set him down in a street of the city. Don't be hanging out in them streets. There's some watching you. It's like an owl and a mouse. That, that mouse don't even know he's been watching. That owl is just <laughs> I'm waiting to get you in a certain position. And look, an owl is so quiet, but he's still a predator. And he's waiting. You won't even know he's on you. And he's flying at a distance, but I'm in a location that he has jurisdiction over. Praise the Lord. You can't go anywhere, y'all, because you think you can. And just because nothing has happened, you keep leaving your city of refuge because it's more fun outside. When God's a God and the avenger, he will let him have his vengeance on you. All because I left where I'm supposed to be. If you can't have your joy in Jesus, you ain't going to have it outside of him. Praise the Lord, family. Amen. Still reading on verse 15. And, and they turned aside tether to go in and to lodge in the, in Gibeon. And when he went in, he sat down in the street. God got a place for you. In a street of the city. For there was no man that took them into his house to lodge him. And we're going to see that's a lie. God going to have somebody find you. You would not be destitute. Amen. So they settled for this as they traveling home. Praise the Lord. But look how God going to send somebody to find you. Praise the Lord. Verse 16. And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at even, which was also of Mount Ephraim. And he sojourned in Gilbin, but the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring or a wandering man, praise the Lord, y'all, in the streets of the city. And the old man said, Well, what goest thou? And whence cometh thou? And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of Mount Ephraim, from, from tense am I. That's where I'm from. See, I'm on my way back home. He says, look at this. Say with me, please. But I am now going to the house of the Lord. He's still in fake. But see, you got to let God put these pieces together. You be reading this stuff and don't pay no attention. So it's like, and when you see the end of it, you weren't looking for the house of the Lord. You was a fake all the time. There are people saying, I'm, I want to go to the house of the Lord. And God's God, I need to give you discernment. They got hidden agendas. Praise the Lord. They coming for the wrong reason. Can I reveal their heart to you? Praise the Lord. And I need for you to be strong enough to say it. Amen. God has revealed your heart. That it's desperately wicked. Woo. It's got an evil agenda. Look, y'all. I wouldn't be a good pastor if I didn't know your heart. 
Because I'm asking God to reveal it. Give me their agenda. And some of us don't want to hear what I got to say. Because your agenda is not of God. It's to be religious. It's to go into the house of the Lord, but you ain't real. Look, you ain't serious about God. Ain't this real, y'all? You don't have to raise your hand like I'm the one. So he says, and there is no man that receiveth me to house. Yet there is both straw and provender or provisions for our donkeys or asses. And there is bread and wine also for me and for thy handmaid and for the young man which is with thy servants. There is no one of anything. God going to always make sure he take care of you. I don't care what you say. But he's going to let you know I'm too good to leave you hanging. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hmm. Now look look at the help. Look, if you pay attention, ain't none of these people got names. The husband, the wife, the servant, the old man. Because God ain't trying to give you no names. I'm just trying to give you truth. Their names don't mean nothing. You got that, y'all? See, so people will go on a search. I can't believe I can't find his name. His name is not needed. He's just telling you about circumstances that can come on you. Praise the Lord, family. They can come on you. And look, without God, you ain't going to know it. Y'all, you have to accept this. You ain't going to know it. There will not be enough of your natural gift to discern it. So it's got to be a spiritual gift that God revealed it. And you ain't even been looking for it, but just because you God. And it's a secret. It's going to be revealed to the righteous. You ain't going to miss it. Praise the Lord. Look at this, y'all. And an old man said, peace be with thee. However, let all thy wants lie upon me. Look how God is saying, and you know, you said it earlier, sis. Seek ye first. Look, God going to take care of you. Let all your wants, God going to put it on somebody to take care of you. You hear y'all? But we're, we still ain't taught to trust him. You Look, we only trust God because you got enough money in the bank. Because the refrigerator is full. Bills are paid. God said, wait till it look like it's lack. Let me see you trust me now. Praise the Lord. And watch how you're going to trip. I ain't got no way to lie. See, we got no need. See, and God's got to, see, there you go. In another world that I didn't put you in. In the world of doubt and unbelief. Look, God tell people, look, have I been with you so long? And you still don't know me. It's like, good God, how long should I stay with you? Oh, ye of little faith. Good God Almighty. Look, peace be with thee. However, let all thy wants lie upon me. Only lodge not in the streets. Don't be gone in the streets looking for your needs to be met. That's why many of us got in trouble. Hanging out in the streets. Look, some may be still hanging out. Stop hanging out. Some you're going to attract, you don't want to attract, that's going to follow you home. Good God Almighty. Shh. Verse 21. So he brought him into his house and gave provender or provisions unto the asses or the donkeys, and they washed their feet and did eat and drink. Look, but uh, look. But ain't trying to be spiritual minded. Now as they were making merry. Making their hearts merry. Behold the men of the city. Somebody been watching them. It ain't just so anybody. It's certain men that follow the devil. They watching you. They watching you come on their territory. Praise the Lord. They watching you. Well you think you all safe. 
And they they looking to follow you to see what home is. Good God almighty. <laughs> Look, verse 22. Now as they were making their merry, their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of uh, uh, Billy all. Anybody know who that is? Billy all. This next word. Certain sons of Billy all. That's how you pronounce it. Just give me one name. Who said it? That's it. Yep. Now watch this. Now let's go back up again and, and read it over. Certain sons. So it ain't everybody. But there are certain people that follow the devil. Amen. And they go find you in the streets. But you don't know they're looking. But they're trying to follow you where your location is going to be. And then they come in. Do you hear it, family? Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Look. look, look. So be, they beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, which was that old man. That old man saying, bring forth the man that came. <laughs> See, and he's saying this because some demons came as in Genesis 19 for the men that came in your house. Now they want the men and see if you can pick it up from here, y'all. Praise the Lord. Look at this. He says, saying, bring forth the man that came into thy house that we may know him. Now we all know that expression. Ain't that right? Amen. Amen. Now look at him because this was a principle that man had did. So this homosexuality was going on all the time. Yeah. Now this is thousands of years later and the spirit is still moving. Yeah. Ain't that something? Yeah. But watch how it's moving this time. Whew. The next verse. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly. Sound like Genesis 19 of Solomon Gomorrah. Look, seeing that this man has come into my house, do not this folly. Now, and then he brings out what folly really means. <laughs> Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden. Now, check this out, y'all. He only has one daughter. But it's been proven once you come to my house, I have authority over you. That still has a certain form of jurisdiction today. Whoever come in your house and they stay in your house, you have authority over them in your house. Now, if they don't like it, they can leave. But once they come in your house, they come under submission to the authority of the house. But a lot of people don't use that. It's like, hey, you ain't going to be coming in my house acting up. Look, you can act up, but it won't be in my house. That makes any sense to your family? Amen. See, but a lot of us don't use that authority. But back then, whoever came in the house, that was part of the rules. Submit yourself to the higher power. Now look how deep it's going to get, praise, praise the Lord. Behold, here is my daughter, in verse 23. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden. And one, watch this, y'all. Look at me, y'all. But hear this word. My daughter's here. And his concubine. He don't have a concubine. So that man that went back to get his wife. His concubine. That's why I said you got to follow me because I'll lose you. See it wasn't his concubine. Praise the Lord. That man that came in his house with his wife. His concubine. Because he got a thought of anybody that come in my house. Now, look how weird this is. Remember, y'all, she still got the spirit of whoredom. Yes, yes. It don't say she ever repented. Amen. Look, and if that man wouldn't have came and got it, she'd been out there longer than four months. Because she liked to hoard him. But she's safe under daddy's jurisdiction. See, that's why, y'all, you got to keep coming because ain't no telling what revelation God want to give you. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, see, that's why you got to know that he didn't have no concubine. He had a daughter. Praise the Lord. Don't say what happened to his wife or anything. So now, 
look what he's doing, that this was part of what you had a right to do. Because when Lot said, look, I got these daughters. I have a right to give them to you because they're still in my house. Ain't that something? Now you see how man's heart was getting hardened? And God had to change this stuff because he getting carried away. Praise the Lord. The, look, you weren't really supposed to do this. But you thought because you had these rights still in existence, you could do it. Now watch this, y'all. Let me show you how cold-hearted man now, from here on, how cold-hearted he is. And that same spirit is here today. That's why God said, he, 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 they find a wife. Not she, 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 they find a husband. Because he got to get favor from God. And uh, for that woman to be a good thing. Look, because the wrong man, she'll end up being a no good thing. Because he been messed her up so bad. Because he had this certain spirit in him of conquering her. The old caveman days, drag you by the hair, do what I say. Not as I do. That spirit is still here today. God Almighty. Would you say so too again? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Look, remember, y'all, I'm going to preach what's supposed to be preached. So, so see, because a lot of men be loving it when I'll be preaching against the world. It's like, oh, Pastor. Oh, oh. Pastor, you know just what to say. I said, wait till it's your turn. Because God ain't to respect the persons. I said, I want to hear all this shouting and amen out of the men now. When the men all of a sudden, quiet as a house mouse. I ain't saying an eek even. Like, I don't want the pastor to know it's me. <laughs> Standing in the need of prayer. Praise the Lord. Look, so you don't want to get careful like this. Oh, pastor. Oh, she shut up. Like, I ain't shutting up. I hurt you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank God for keeping us, huh? Hallelujah, y'all. So we all need help, don't we, family? Yeah. Look, so we're going to drop down here, saints. Verse 24. Behold, here's my daughter, amen, and his concubine. Then will I bring out now. Now, y'all, from here, don't blink. Because from here to the rest of this chapter, it's going to blow your mind. Praise God. So, Hold off on your revelations <laughs> and try to stay with this and let, then let God just pour into you. Amen. Amen. But, but in verse 25, but the man would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth and to, unto them. Now, hear this now, y'all. Now it changes. Now her husband is bringing her out. You see how cold hearted this clown is? Ain't that so? All because he don't want to get raped. <laughs> so look, he's sacrificing her. Because look, remember, they want to come, or we want him. That we may know him. Now in Genesis 19, you better give us this man, at least it be more violent with you than it was going to be with him. So we ain't going to ask you, we're going to rape you. Praise the Lord. Let me show you. How this spirit is still here today. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Look, sisters, you want a man that's going to fight for you. Yeah. Instead of, hey, 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 I ain't dying for you. Go, go on out there. Look, either you get raped or me. Praise the Lord. Look, I'm just trying to catch you up on some of these revelations. So it's like, now he's giving agreement for his woman to go forth. Praise the Lord. And look, now look. They leaving the old man alone. His daughter alone. And look how deep this gets. But the man, in verse 25, but the man would not hearken to him, so the man took his concubine. In other words, we don't care what you say, but look, we just got so much lust in us, whatever we can get. <laughs> Do you hear it, family? Are you going to see it? Whatever, what, look, if you, you are protesting against uh, this man but look you ain't protest, protesting against this woman so look at this if they came to get the man 
could not have them, but yet they take the woman. What is? What are you dealing with? Say it, y'all. Don't be scared. Bisexual. They wanted first the man. Couldn't get the man, so they accepted the woman. See, y'all, God got to give us stuff that we didn't read. Probably it's like, I didn't see it like that. And watch how they don't really want the woman. It's just so much lust and how much violence in them. Shh. Look, still reading here, y'all. Verse 25 still. But the man would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. See, the husband now is in here. I agree with y'all. Just be messing with me. That's cold, ain't it? How would you like to marry that clown? Look at this, y'all. Okay, now, look how evil this is. And they knew her and abused her all night. All night. These nasty devils taking turns. Biggest train of ain't. Now, look at this, y'all. And abused her all night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman into the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house. Look, she made it back. She so woe out, she just fall right there on the threshold, right in front of the door. Stay with how cold-hearted the man is. Then came the woman in verse 28, 26. Then came the woman into the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house. Not her house, because they're still on a journey home. Amen? Uh, where her Lord was, her Lord was her husband. Sarah called Abraham Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm not losing you, my saints. Amen. Look, look. Till it was light. And her Lord arose, her husband, up in the morning and opened the door. And saw her there. Now watch how cold he is. Opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. See, he's leaving to go back home. But look, one even waiting for. He is having to open the door and there she is. But he was leaving without waiting. Come on, y'all. Look, look. And behold, the woman <laughs> and his concubine was falling down at the door of the house. And her hands were upon the threshold. And he said unto her, Up! In other words, get up! No compassion. Knowing what's happening. Look, and let us be going. <laughs> look, look how weak and wild she is. But none answered. She, look, she's so wild she can't even say nothing. No compassion. This spirit is here today. It ain't going nowhere. Folks are trying to act like it's gone. Demons ain't dead. They ain't, they ain't, they ain't nowhere but right here on this earth. Hmm. Look, look. Then the man took her up by a donkey or an ass, and the man rose up and got him onto his place. He's ready to go. Now watch this family. And when he was coming to his house, he made it home now. Look at his agenda. He took a knife. Laid hold on his concubine and divided her together with her bones into twelve pieces and sent her into all the coast. And it was so that all that saw it said, There was no such deed done nor ever seen from the day of the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt until this day. Now, this is I want you to be right here, y'all. Consider it. Consider it. Look, advice. And speak your mind. If you feel that man ain't right, you better say something. Amen. God is trying to tell you from here, I'm giving you advice. Consider what I say. Do you hear it, family? Because you may be man the same spirit that's looking for it don't feel it has the advantage as of yet. 
But it will abandon you. It will sell you. It will treat you like dirt. Walk on you. But, but look his agenda was. Let me speak to you friendly. But his true agenda is. Wait till I get you home. What you did to me. But I'm a fool daddy. To get you back. I'm a fool you to come back. But my agenda I'm going to hide well. And if I stay around this old man too long. I'm going to be exposed. So let me get out of here. Before you find me out. Before I speak too much. Look and let you know what my real heart is. This is making sense to you. And God is trying to wake us up. Especially now. This spirit is really moving. Spirit of delusion is really moving. Sisters, I ain't afraid. I'm going to speak on your behalf. If your husband's still a jerk, he may stay a jerk. God call them creeps. Silly woman heavily laden with sin. Well, devil's was creeping to your house. <laughs> Look, somebody got to tell you issues of what you're dealing with. So, man, if you hear this, you better get your act together. Look, I'm going to be advising women, be careful. Be careful. I don't care how he said he loved you today. He's friendly today. Find out what his agenda is. You know what his agenda is? If he keep going back to who he is, he never left, never, he never left who he was. He can't help but to expose his agenda. You wanted to be exposed before the plan get to working. And then you find out too late that this man didn't want a wife. He wanted a knife. Look, he already had a plan. I'm going to touch you up when we get home. <laughs> I'm going to cut you up into 12 pieces, but I ain't going to tell you. See, I'm going to pretend like I want you, but I want vengeance. You paid the whore for four months on me. I'm coming back to get you. Praise the Lord. This is stuff preachers don't want to preach. He didn't come back to reconcile. He came back for vengeance. And then, but by the time she found out, it's too late. Didn't mind that men were wearing her out. Ain't that something? That so wore out, she can't get off of her feet. On the, on the floor with her hands on, and on, on her hands and knees. All night. They're abusing her. And he didn't have, if you pay attention, not a good word for her. Matter of fact, he was leaving without waiting on her. He just had an open the door and there she was. But he was leaving without her. See? Just cold hearted. Praise the Lord, family. Because all he cared about, I ain't getting raped. See? I ain't getting raped. So these bisexuals, look, anything you can offer me without war. It's like, hey, we ain't got no trouble. So you can't get caught up with Solomon and Gomorrah's situation. That there's a spirit that anything I can have. Don't really have no joy. I just want to abuse it. Don't really care about the pleasure of it. I just want to abuse it. See, I want to destroy it. I want it to be destroyed. Those spirits are still out there. Sisters, you may marry a homosexual but, uh, that go both ways. I met somebody in my old church. This man we thought was highly anointed. He's the first man I've ever seen in my life that can preach out of every book in the Bible without stopping. He would take all 66 books and preach something out of all of them. He was good at playing the, homos, the, the, the saxophone. And tell the woman he married, her name was Sister Green. She said, Mr. Brown, I want to talk to you. I said, what's going on, Sister Green? I feel you got enough maturity. We can talk. She said, no, the man I marry is a homosexual. I said, he what? Mr. Anointed? Just got everybody jumping around in the church? How these devils can fool you, even the pastor? Fooled everybody. I said, what? She said, and I told him I'll work with you to get delivered from that. So a few months later, she came. Mr. Brown, it ain't working. He said, I love men. But you didn't know that from the beginning, did you? See? You went back what you thought was anointed. You never tried to see if they were of God. 
You just took everybody's word and how it moved. But it was a, it went both ways all the time. And to finally he got overtaken. And went back to, I just want the man. So he's making love to his wife. But it ain't working. So the strong man surfaced and overtook him. They end up having to get a divorce. But everybody was surprised. Wait a minute. Didn't y'all just get married? It ain't even a year. But it's like, after he leave me, he go get with me. He go both ways. And say he was saved. Had everybody fooled. I didn't hear one person say, I, I picked up on him. But yet, that was moving in the church. People would love to hear him preach something from every book, all 66. Non-stop. And really gifted at playing that saxophone. And called himself praising the Lord in the dance. He'd have that church jumping. But he was a deceiver. And when God finally exposed him, people still was having a hard time believing it. Until he just proved it. Yeah, that's who I am. It's still here and it's still in churches. Look, a lot of women I'm married to are bisexual, but don't know it. Remember, Eddie Long got kids, but yet love, love boys. And then he saw withering and dying. They tried to hide it, but we know he died of AIDS. But tried to hide it. And got a wife with kids. But tried to hide it. It can't be hidden, y'all. What's in you coming out? Yeah. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. So, y'all, do it. It's so help to you give it to God and bring it out. Yeah. You don't have to do it in front of folks. Find your place. Just you and God talking. And remember, search me. If there's a wicked in me, I can get it out. Look, I don't have to let the devil tell on me. I tell on myself. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I don't want to be faking. Remember how Abraham got faked out if I can find 50. Look, 50 among millions. Well, I know it's got to be more than this because the synagogues are packed. He said, listen, you can go out to 10 and you ain't going to find it. I know them. You think you do. Praise the Lord, family. But God know us. You want to go by God's thoughts and not by your own thoughts. Let God give you his thoughts because he knows the thoughts he has for you. Yeah. You know, many of you, um, sisters, you're going to be running to a whole lot of lesbian spirits. And some of them are just waiting to hit on you. They ain't saying nothing just yet. Praise the Lord. They're just waiting. Man, you're going to run across a whole lot of uh, homosexual spirits. They're just waiting. They just want to find you out. I remember working in prison. One told me, he said, I dare you to come back in the cell. I'll make love better to you than your wife ever did. I said, y'all that bold. And lesbians are bold. Devils are bold. Look, heterosexuals are some of the most the monarchy used people in the world. Look, some of them followed the devil. Certain men. But all heterosexuals follow the devil unless you got Jesus. Praise the Lord. I ain't no, I'm kind of saved. I'm about to be saved. I will be saved one day. You better be saved when the Lord come back. Or, or if you have to leave this earth. You better already have it. And don't you be a foolish virgin. Had it and lost it. God will close the door on you. God will let you know. Look and we're going to find some more issues. That even children were messed up. And look church ain't dealing with it. Oh my little baby little angel. You know some devil up in there. You know it. Uh, don't say that about my little angel. First of all, it ain't an angel. See, so we're lying right there. 
Praise the Lord. Now, there's a devil. Now I'm telling the truth. Praise the Lord. Look, and look, you got to notice it. God is expecting you to protect it. Put it on his covenant. Praise the Lord. Or else your kid is in trouble. If you don't train it up in the way it should go, it's going to train you up in the way it wants you to go. If you train your kid, or your kid going to retrain you. You're going to find yourself being a kid and they the adult. And you actually find yourself scared of them. I said, ain't that amazing? Big old adults. Scared of little bitty kids. And kids know you're scared of them. They'll intimidate you. <laughs> Have you running from them? I ain't going to say nothing. They're going to get mad at me. Let them get mad. They're going to be glad later on. Like this man that was doing 20 years in prison, he said this one thing. I think if my mom and, mommy and daddy would have disciplined me more, I wouldn't be here. But they let me just do what I wanted. And this other man said, you know, I never disciplined my kids. And the kids end up being drunks. Praise the Lord. I said, what kind of parent are we? Especially we're not in Christ. Mom is in, look, I just want to tell you, you want to pick up your kids and love them, but don't be holding them all the time. You're teaching them a bad habit. See, kids love to hear the heartbeat. And they like the rhythm. You have to break them from that. Kid ain't doing nothing. I just want to pick you up. It lets you know you don't want to pick me up later. When I see you walk by, ah, come back here. And then you bring them to church and ask pastor to deliver them. These are the same kids that got to go to school and, and the teachers don't want to even deal with your kids. So they have found out to give your kids a name and some medicine to go with it. So they can have some peace other than that they quit. I remember once, true story, family. I told the uh, kindergarten teacher, I said, when it comes to my granddaughter, don't call her mama, call me. She said, Mr. Brown, you told me to call you. She said, this Jasmine is kicking my teachers, and I got good teachers to tell me they're going to quit if she's here. And she's only five. I said, I'll be there when I get off work. I said, take me to her. What is wrong with you? Get yourself together. They never had to call me back ever again. She's the nicest kid in the school. See, all she needed was a little respect. R-S-P-C-T. That's what it means to me. <laughs> See, I gave her a little respect. She honored everybody. Amen. Teacher ain't never called me no more. I said, if it happened again, call me. I said, because her mom ain't training her. But, but I'm going to help you out. Praise the Lord. Look, I'm going to have, I said, because I did you with the same on courage. And, but you lived when you thought I was killing you. Praise the Lord. So I had to put love out there for real, for real, and handle you. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's, now hear this, y'all. I got to put the world to where it's supposed to be placed. Amen. He that hated. No matter, I don't care what you're telling me. I love my kids. I say, if you ain't disciplined them, no, you don't. God say, he that hated his child. See, you ain't going to chastise them because you hate them. See how God going to make sure he gets the truth to you. Uh, I love him. Uh, I don't want to hurt him. It hurts me. Look, it's going to hurt you more once they end up doing some criminal acts. You'll be surprised. They could be doing criminal acts right now. You don't know it. Little girls could have boyfriends. Thinking about it, they can get birth control pills and you don't even know they got them. Carrying condoms. We're just talking real stuff here, y'all. That's, how do you find this stuff? They got a way. They, they got friends they can talk to that can tell them how to get it. Don't let it just be set on course and go any way it wants to. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. Contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. You got to fight back, family, if you plan on enjoying life. Praise the Lord. Because you live long enough, they live long enough, they're going to break your heart. 
They're going to be doing things that you cannot believe they're doing. Then believe it because it's going to happen. Because after a while they choose which way they want to go. And don't be surprised if they don't choose Jesus. But as long as you put Jesus in them, when they get old, they will not depart. They coming back home, y'all. When they get old, they come. They coming back. I don't care how they act. It. So look, go and do something else. Amen. Cause God got that thing. Any questions, family? So watch being in those streets. Some following you that you don't even know is following. Look, this man didn't even know they were watching him. Dude, and following him. But they never know it until yes. bring that man out that's in here. I, wasn't nobody in the street. Look, I was way far. In. I was just wondering. I didn't see nobody out here. But them devils saw you. And following you, they were stalking you. Now come out since we know your location. But they was going to rip him off in the streets anyway. But God put you under protection. Pay attention. Praise the Lord. Yes, brother, go ahead. It's a lesson really good. I've got to go through this. Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. The chapter just said, he's a person who is my brother. Yes. You're really a child. It's too late. So when he said to the Yes. That's real. That's real, Brother Wayne. Amen. Thank you, Brother Wayne. It's real. And, and mommies, let me just add this. It's all right to let uh, some people hold your child, but pay attention to the time frame. Amen. True. They'll be holding them too long, and now they don't want to come back to you. <laughs> They're so used to them. So people, oh, so cute, so cute. It's like, put my child down. They didn't want you. <laughs> they weren't calling for you. Let them enjoy seeing me yeah. and landing their basket. <laughs> Look, I'm training them up. Look, I'm training them up to be dependent upon God. Here it, y'all. Give your child a chance to release a perfect praise. Look, if you don't, it's going to cause when you hold your child, it, it can hear your heartbeat. It'll get addicted to it. To give it a chance for angels to minister, for out of the mouth of babes and sucklings come perfect praise. Give it a chance for angels to minister. Yeah. Too often we intercede when angels want to do some talking. Okay. Ain't that right? Look, you look on your chair, it's like, you all right. See, you've been fed, you've been taken care of, you've been cleansed. Look, let me let you lay there for a minute. Look. You're going to cry out when it's time for me to hug you and pick you up. And every now and then, you don't have to cry out because you love it. You just pick it up. But you have to pay attention to your own time frame. Look, you, we, child don't even need you. I'm just going to be carrying them anyway. And brothers, I need to say this to you because you'll be surprised how that woman could be stronger than you. But you don't know it. Try carrying that baby. Holding that baby in your arms. Watch your arms start hurting you don't hear the lady saying nothing. She know how to take that baby and switch it over here. Switch it over here. Switch it up here. And you like, I am so tired. And it's going to come out your mouth. And you can take your baby back now. It's only been five minutes. I've been holding them for hours. So you can't say she that weak. She has her own strength. And you need to acknowledge it. So if you don't want to get reminded how strong she is, she develop a strength. So brothers, also, well, we need to start some stuff, ain't it? <laughs> brothers, you don't have to be always around your wife when they change the baby and feed the baby. <laughs> Sit yourself down in here, what God want to do for you. Because, look, you be taking over the woman's job and don't even know you're doing it. 
Look, I see this all in church. Look, you got plenty of time when you get home. When you get home, you may run from it. Look, let God order your steps. See, I know in the beginning it's all nice, but I said, you wait until it develop that bread. Let me see if you want to deal with it now and how it's going to own you. And they know how to own you, y'all. Daddy. Daddy. Mommy. Mommy's like, what? They'll ask you for something, but you're going to give it to them. Because they know how to get to you. And then you know how to get bound by saying, Daddy's baby. So you're going to yield yourself to their submission. And they don't know you did it. Look, a good daddy got to move in the timing, and a good mama got to move in the timing. It's good to, if your kids have no needs, then they need to be left alone. Amen. But look, but you oversee it all the time. So somebody make the kid ain't crying and ain't need nothing, and somebody, oh, can I pick her up? Not now. Why? They're in training. Amen. I'm training them not to be so dependent on folks. Because I'm telling you, did you see that little commercial? Linda, 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 Linda. Look, it's like every time you saw Linda, I'm going to control her. And then they said, watch this. So I watched this YouTube. And the little kid is fine until mama leaves sight. And the little kid just going to a rage as soon as he see mama. Ah! It's like, I just want to see you. If I don't see you, I'm going to act like somebody killing me. It's controlling, mom. Praise the Lord. So before this happened, y'all, stay ahead of it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I ain't talking about beat you little one month old, you know. Amen. Pastor said, we'll beat you. It won't kill you. We're not talking that. Amen. You don't want to snatch your kid and they go one way and the arm still is in your hand, you know. No, we want to do everything. He said, the love of God will restrain you. The love of God is going to tell you that's enough. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's enough. That's enough of that. Now. Look, they've learned. Amen. So don't go into this old teaching of beating you for old and new. See? <laughs> no, that ain't the teaching. And, you remember, and when you beat them, it ain't what the word is saying. You're just training them. Because sometimes God said, mischief is bound in the heart of a child. And the raw will drive it far from them. So time, sometimes you just kill me a baby. Because to show your kids know what they're doing, let them do something they, they ain't supposed to be doing. They're going to first look at you. See if you're checking them out. And they may try you, even though you're looking at them. <laughs> it's like, I told you not to touch it. I'm sick on touching it. <laughs> looking right at you. Praise the Lord. So look, and you got to send that kid to school. And the teacher going to be calling you, your kid's trouble. We're going to put him in special ed. Because we can't deal with him. And know how to put them on written to deal with their mind and uh, soothe them and calm them down. Praise the Lord. Killing your kids. Any more questions, love one? Thank you for that commentary, Brother Wayne. Yes, Brother Day. <clears throat> <clears throat> but I just want to repent. I want to repent openly. I want to kill my, my ego and I want to kill my pride. I've been in and out of this church. I've been in and out of my walk with Christ. I've been in the streets. I've always loved the Lord, but I've always had an issue with being disciplined and being obedient. And I owe a lot of people some apologies, but I had a turning point in my life yesterday. And I choose God again. I choose him for real this time. I choose him. Father, Father, I repent to you. you you're, you're a good man. A loving man. I bring things to you you don't condemn. 
You made righteous judgment and you showed me love. And you've been a great example to me. You've been so patient with me. I should be here supporting you. And my flesh has had some victories. But my spirit just, it won't let me sleep. It won't let me, it won't let me go. God continues to show me my gifts, but he shows me how I keep suppressing the gifts. And I repent to y'all because I stood up several times and I would come in and I would preach. And that would literally be my love for God. But then I would go right back out to where the enemy wanted me to be. So, Father, just today in front of the church and you, I rededicate my life Praise the Lord. to the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm not And I'm not saying that these challenges are going to be easy but I will tell you I I I am I am dedicated to righteousness. I am dedicated to the kingdom and whatever he wants me to do and I'm saying it in front of the enemy and anybody else that may be here and there that may be one foot in and one foot out that there is Nothing like a double-minded man. I've lived it. I've been experiencing it. And you, t- and your soul tossed back and forth and you hide it the, the best you can and you put up an image the best you can. But inside out, when, when God got a holding you and you know the enemy got a pull on you, there's this back and forth and you know it internally all by yourself. You know it. But this is me dismissing my ego, pastor. And this is me not worrying about anybody, what they think about me. And I'm going to share that continuously. Even as I go out at this church, I owe some people some apologies and I want to be repentant of anything I do. And I don't want to worry about how I look anymore all the time in my life. I can look back. I wanted validation. I wanted affirmation. I wanted people to look me up and to be astonished by me. But I remember those are the same attributes that got the devil kicked out of heaven. 